Welcome to the theater of magic. Seven o'clock. Magic. Eight o'clock. Hocus pocus. Nine o'clock. Packed magic. Ten o'clock. Vanquish the chain. Eleven o'clock. You must break through. Midnight madness. Tiger song. <laughs> Mystifying. Unbelievable. Spectacular. The theater awaits. Welcome guys to the Theatre of Magic. Yes, I am back this week. Sorry about last week. Did you miss me? <laughs> I missed you guys. I, uh, I, I just couldn't do the video last weekend, guys. I really couldn't. Now remember, I did say at the start of this channel that this was, you know, it was all going to be fun. It wasn't going to be work. And it wasn't that actually, it wasn't like I got to the uh, end of the week and thought, oh, I have to make a video. I wanted to make a video, but uh, I had a, uh, a, I had a really big week last week, and also this week has been massive uh, at work, but then we had this massive work function as well, and it was a really, really good function, had a lot of fun, a little bit too much fun. And uh, first, I couldn't record on that Friday night because that was the night of the function. And then Saturday, guys, was um, it was a write-off. <laughs> it was a complete write-off. I was in no, no, I wasn't not necessarily the mood. I just was not capable. I wasn't capable of actually moving too far, put it that way. So, yeah, a little bit of overindulgence, guys, and um, that uh, took me out. And Sunday, <laughs> Sunday, I was still actually, I think I still was recovering, to be honest. Um, and I just, yeah, I was trying to catch up on some other stuff. And before you know it, I was back into the working week again. So anyway, sorry, guys, missed that one. That's the first one I've missed. Ah, didn't want to do that, but um, didn't want to hold myself to it either. So anyway, <laughs> enough of that. Let's get into this video. Um, Gosh, there's actually been quite a lot happening uh, around here. So take a look at this room, guys. Just when I had it all sorted out, it's now a complete utter mess again. <laughs> Things everywhere, every machine has been pulled out. Um, of course, the virtual pinball machine is also down. Um, oh, you'll notice that I've actually got the uh, the Super Sprint, the new Super Sprint um, control panel ready to go on. I managed to pick one of those up, guys. You won't believe it. How hard it is to find a Super Sprint game, let alone a control panel by itself. It actually came with one wheel on it as well, all the way from the US. So I, ha I actually got that a little while ago. So I do want to get that on the Super Sprint. But yeah, guys, look around the room. There's just everything everywhere. The uh, championship sprint uh, co uh, cockpit is in pieces. Why have I done this to myself? Everything was so good. Everything was set up so beautifully. And now it is uh, a mess. And the reason why, guys, is because I went, as I look around the room, you know, even though everything was great, <laughs> seriously, I should have just enjoyed it for a while, but I still had this nagging, you know, sense of I need to fix these some of these things that are that are wrong and and you know it's, it's great to have the the theater set up in such a nice way but if people can't play all the games then really it doesn't make a lot of sense right so what i was trying to do guys at this other end of the room here in terms of the apb machine um or at least the cabinet which has got the world rally in it now if you <laughs> go back some episodes you remember I fried the World Rally board, the sound on it, because I shorted the speakers. Yeah, I did a really dumb thing and stuck the positive and negative on the same terminal. I will show you those speakers. When I fix that up, I will show you how easy. Well, I guess it's not that easy. That was a dumb mistake. But it's got two tabs, two tabs on both positive and negative. And I put the positive and negative on the same tab. Anyway. Blew that amplifier up and I had to get, I thought I'm going to get that board out and I'm going to get it over to Joey at JMAC with some other things here that need fixing up. So I thought, well, I've got to get it out. Now to get that damn machine out, that World Rally out, I have to, I had to take out the Super Sprint, get it out of the way. Now there's no room to take the Super Sprint out and move the <laughs> World Rally around without moving the other two, uh, the Astro City and the Fake Seeker Blast. So those who had to move around. So I've ended up having to move everything to just get that one board out of that machine and having said that I've also got the super sprint um, needs some fixing and we're going to have a little bit of a look at that and where I've got up to with that particular machine in this video 
but uh, that one actually was, you know, really needs to be pulled out to, to be worked on as well anyway. And then of course around the back here in the, uh, the main area, I took the bootleg frog board out of the cocktail machine. And funnily enough guys, didn't realize, but in that cocktail machine, um, it's got all the original wiring and it's got an, uh, an original um, amplifier board in there. Uh, amplifier soundboard for the original Logitech Space Invaders setup, and so when I took the frog board out, I actually saw the extra uh, amplifier and um, power board uh, tucked in behind around the back of the monitor there, and uh, <laughs> I thought, oh god, I've, I've take the frog because the frog board's got no sound if you remember a couple of episodes ago. So the frog board I wanted to get fixed as well. So I take, took that out, saw the other board there, and then I thought, oh, and I looked at it, I thought, oh no, the thing's got blooming. Looks like it's fried itself. It's burnt actually a, a hole in the bottom of the the cocktail of the cab. And I thought, well, if that's the original board and all the other wiring is there, um, once I actually get that real uh, original Logitech Space Invaders PCB, which hopefully is coming soon, um, and once that goes in there, I, I would have restored the thing back to its original glory, but only if I can get this amplifier soundboard going. And it was tucked in right behind the monitor. <laughs> so, guys, I thought, oh, God, because I, I did all this at, like, really late to take all the stuff out and, and get it off to Joey. And I'd already moved all this stuff. I was just exhausted. But anyway, I, I got stuck in. I, I, I uh, grounded the monitor and um, got my hand in down the, around the back and tried to get this thing out. It took me a while. But anyway, I got that board out and got that to Joey as well and then of course the pole position which is in the jam, uh, grand champion cabinet or, or the um, cockpit cabinet that of course was giving me grief um, I did show it yeah I showed it when we did the the uh, pickup did we do the pickup video I showed it maybe the video after that anyway I think I showed that the fact that the pole position PCB in there in the grand champion machine because it been converted previously um, pole position two mind you and that was working intermittently um but just not stable and i couldn't get it stable and i dialed up and down with the voltages couldn't get it to work guys um i ended up fixing up a few other things the shifter this there was just a standard little switch um for the shifter in fact funnily enough with that you know if you've got a, a standard switch um it's got like three prongs on it and the normal two prongs i use one on the end and one on the side I should really have a picture of this. <laughs> but those two are the ones I normally hook up for most buttons. And funnily enough, when I hooked those two up on a new switch, uh, the gear shifter was reversed. So high was low and low was high. Uh, and then I just used the other pin on there um, and then it, it turned it around the right way. But I still have another problem because there is something wrong with the pot on the pedal and the pedal doesn't seem to register all the way down. And I can't get to the pedal pot because it's actually encased in a big wooden box around the back of the cabinet. And that, that is uh, drilled down with, well not drilled down, but screwed down with some really heavy, heavy screws. And someone's tried to get them apart before and burnt all the tops of them. It's really difficult to get in there guys. I I don't know how I'm going to get that off, but I have to get that off as well. But anyway, back to the PCB issues. Uh, once I get, once I get to fix that pedal, the PCB, of course, is the thing that needs to be fixed. And guys, the pole positions. You know, I've done a lot of research now on pole position tubes and the original pole positions, and you know they all have these issues with the batteries and. And uh, I think if you recall, I don't know if I've actually spoken about this before, but mine had that, that problem where there was some acid damage and um, had to uh, remove the original battery and yeah, it, it, it's damaged the bottom chip. And I think, you know, it, it's so close to, to, to being stable, you know, it is running, everything else is cool on it. I really thought, well, maybe it's just that area of the uh, of the board. So I did reach out to my good mate Joey <laughs> at Joe Mac has been helping me out so much on this journey, and full props to, to Joey guys. I mean, and look up Joe Mac, um, you know, use him for fixing your chassis and stuff. The guy's brilliant. <laughs> He's helped me really on this journey. Without him, I wouldn't have been able to do do all of this. You know, I would have had to send this stuff overseas or something, and probably would never have got any of it done. Anyway, so I sent that off to Joey as well. Now he has no way of actually plugging it in. So he's he's actually had an attempt at fixing the pole position board PCB, uh, pole position two board PCB blind. 
and I said that's cool you know whatever you can do to that area where the battery has damaged the board if you can fix it up you know as good as you can for what you can see then that's awesome I'll give it a try if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't I haven't lost you know anything other than the the, the time and money to just get that um, repaired along with some other things so I sent that off to Joey as well. Um, I also had the monitor chassis uh, for the original monitor that was that came with the, uh, the the weird LAI cabinet with the big plastic um, <laughs> big plastic top. And by the way, I found another one of those for sale recently. I could not believe it. So, and even more curious was that. The other one that was for sale had the full plastic, the plastic around the back as well as the front, but it was actually fully round. So the front was completely, you know, round as well. Whereas on mine, the front is actually sort of flat and it looks molded that way. So two different versions, perhaps, I don't know. So that was crazy anyway. So that, that CRT that I had in there originally, and I took it out, of course, to turn into the ice cold beer machine, um, that, that didn't work if you recall if you go back to that original uh, episode and when I looked at the chassis board you know where the the main uh, connector out to the um, is it off to the to the back of the tube I think it was that connector you're pretty sure that was like bent like right over and that was just because the way it was positioned on the back there it seemed like it was had a lot of force against it so it didn't look good on that chassis anyway so I thought oh well look I might as well send that off <coughs> to Joey as well see if he can uh, see if he can fix that so so let's have a look what what, what, what did we have here we had the uh, we had the world rally with the sound issue uh, which I wanted to to fix we had the frog board with the sound issue that I'd like him to repair. We had the original um, amplifier soundboard from the same machine, which is for the Space Invaders PCB when I get it, wanting to be repaired. With the PCB um, from the Pole Position 2 uh, with a blind repair on that. And, uh, and then we had the chassis for the monitor and that chassis and that monitor, if fixed, would be going back into the Hyper Olympic, which I keep saying that I want to get that LCD out of there and stick a CRT in. Well, today is the day, guys. Well, today is the day that I got all the parts back. Let's not let's not jump ahead too far, because today is the day I went to see Joey. He called. I got a a, uh, a message from his lovely wife yesterday, who said all the parts are ready to pick up. So I went and picked them up today, guys. It was Friday, end of the week. I thought, yay, <laughs> pick up this stuff. I could get this theatre back to normal. Get all these boards stuck in, um, and that was the plan. And, it's, and that's pretty much the plan, but I have to change it just ever so slightly. So when I picked up the everything from Joey, again, he's just done an incredible job for me. His work is, it's just first first class. And when he showed me, he showed me the uh, the amplifier soundboard for the uh, for the Logitech, and and that that there is a work of art. <laughs> what he's done to that, he's just gave given it the best parts. It looks like it's just like like new. Although he had to you know he had to get rid of all the. Um, the burn marks that was on that particular board, guys. He had to scrub all that off because it was conducting across the, uh, you know, across the PCB. So he spent ages on it, guys. He's just, you know, he really does. He really cares. <laughs> he really cares about his customers' stuff and getting the stuff back up and going. It's so cool. And that board, it was so badly designed originally in terms of where it was positioned in that cocktail machine because that bottom. Uh, part whatever that is you know you must have got really really hot burnt a hole into that bottom of that cabinet I mean literally it, it, it is charcoal in there <laughs> like like it caught fire at some point and I can't stress enough guys like you know I do have I have a fire extinguisher if you have these old games a couple of things that I do strongly recommend one have a fire extinguisher handy and also two don't leave your games on if you're not around them you know they're, they're old they're in wooden cabinets um Electrics can go wrong, when, especially when they're this old and you don't know what how they've been hacked or whatever. It doesn't take much, guys, and you know you, you get a fire in your hand. So. 
be safe, okay? Seriously, be safe. It's well worth the investment and well worth the time to switch off your games when you're not around. So anyway, so he fixed um, he fixed that up for me, which was cool. He couldn't fix the frog. Now, interest, interesting story here, guys. So the frog is a bootleg of a standard frogger, which is a Konami board. The original, of course, as being a bootleg, isn't an original Konami board. Now, I did read somewhere online that you can't swap the ROMs from an original Konami Frogger into the Frog board. If that's right or not, I don't know, um, but it does tend to suggest to me that there's something different with the board, even though they look very, very similar. Two-stack board, but looks very similar between the Konami and the, um, the copy. So I made an assumption, and guys, you really shouldn't make assumptions with these sorts of things. <laughs> it gets you into trouble. But I made an assumption, and I thought, well, I mean, it looked pretty similar in terms of the board. It's the same game, but yeah, okay, it's a bootleg. Maybe they got some of the chips different, but surely, you know, surely the cabling and everything's the same. I would have thought that, you know, it's a bootleg. Maybe they're going to swap it into a real Frogger cab or whatever. So it should have Katanami classic cabling, all right? Well... I have a Konami to Jammer converter, which I have used before. And to be honest, I was going to check this first on my Astro City before I sent it to Joey. Um, but I must admit, I thought, if it's not right, do I want to blow up my Astro City? So I didn't actually do that. Now, Joey actually ran it up and it, and it, and it actually did nothing. So it didn't actually work at all, whereas at least I was getting it running uh, just without any sound. So I suspect, <laughs> I've got a long story here. So I suspect that the, um, the Frog PCB has a different set of of pinouts on the on the uh, on the connector so if you have a frog bootleg pcb and you know what those pinouts are or you can point me to where they are i should probably just search on the internet right look at it <laughs> get onto google and find it i'm sure i can and i have to have a check and see what the pinouts are because they clearly seem to be different um to it well unless the ball completely died uh, at joey's i have got it back of course i can plug it back into my original cabinet here um it's running off a separate power supply and stuff it's not running off the the one that's um uh stuck in the um uh you know the original space invaders one it's got a separate power supply after it was converted so i will check that so anyway so that's the uh that's the frog board it's the Space Invaders. The, again, the Space Invaders one, I won't be able to test until I get the Space Invaders PCB, so I'll do that another day. Uh, I got the pole position. Now, the pole position, guys, is going to be the one that's like, <laughs> is it, yeah, it's just going to work because yeah, you can't get pole position <laughs> boards working. And I love that guy's forum post. The guy who said, yeah, it's not a matter of is a pole position, you know, one or two working. It's like how long, how long will it work? It's, a, it's just a matter of time but in terms of if it's a working board or not. Um, they don't seem to stay working. So anyway, we shall see. I, I think I'm blabbing on here, but I, um, <laughs> I've had such a massive week, guys, you would not believe. Um, I'm looking forward to at least testing it out and seeing, and here's the kicker with that. I tell you what, here's the kicker. Joey found another complete um, board set. Um, and I believe it's a pole position too as well. I don't know if the pole, pole, their Namco pole positions look the same as the Namco pole position twos. They look very different to the Atari sets. Um, but he he ended up giving me a spare board set as well as part of the a part of the deal. Unbelievable guy. Um, so now I actually have a spare board set as well. I mean it's 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 unknown condition and you know it needs a bit of a clean all the rest of it so who knows uh, what condition it's in but we've got something else potentially to to work with and to top it all off I also picked up a beautiful 26 I think it's a 26 inch I keep saying 25 um, and it wasn't a 25 so it's a 26 inch and that one is going into the championships sprint cabinet because you I think you remember I've done a few comments about that being converted uh, and it will be able to be converted back so don't stress but I'll be able to put a big 26 inch in there and we're going to change it over to a, like a multi Williams cab is another one of our projects along the way uh, completely reversible which will be fine but um, that's just going to be that's going to be a cool cool little project to do down the track so guys that's uh, that's I think the update um, all that stuff 
picked up in the car at X car full of all this gear bring it home and now I am looking forward to this weekend well hopefully this weekend we'll see how we go and I want to start getting all you know as much as I can of this stuff back in fixed up and uh, everything back put back to normal pole position is going to be the the tricky one um, you know I, I seriously guys I give it about a I don't know. I'm I'm pretty pessimistic on it actually. I think it's about a 20% chance that it will actually work and sort of stay stay on and um, not not fail. So we shall see, and uh, it'll be awesome if that does work. Uh, and of course, the other thing I've got to fix the damn pedals. I've got to get that wooden box off. So I don't know how I'm going to do that. The other big thing that I really need to do and carry on with is the Super Sprint. So with the Super Sprint guys, what I'm going to do is I actually did some work on it and I was going to complete it as part of a special video on the Super Sprint in terms of the repair. And the thing is, is that was done a couple of weeks ago and I just haven't managed to sort of carry on the, the you know, with it. And with everything else now moving around in the theatre and stuff, it seems like I've got myself out of sync. So what I'm going to do is we'll cut here over to where I got up to with the Super Sprint. So this will show you the last lot of diagnostic stuff, which is pretty interesting actually. Um, and once we go through that we'll we'll come back and we'll uh we'll finish off the video with a few more little things so let's kick over to the super sprint and you can see where i got up to if you if you go back to the episode where i started the super sprint you'll recall that i actually took down my championship sprint to put the cpu board in here and that's because we were missing the main cpu on the system 2 cpu board now I have managed, if you recall back in that episode, we talked about that chip being quite elusive, uh, had gold pins, it was often melted down, and it's actually really quite expensive just to buy that chip on its own. So I did a lot of uh, searching high and low to see what the options were, and I found that uh, in Russia, they, um, they actually cloned those particular chips which were used again in the PDP-11 mini computer back in the day. I don't know if they cloned them for the use for that use or if they cloned them to use in Atari boards. Probably not for Atari games but um, probably more the mini computer use. But anyway they did clone them and, uh, and sure enough I um, bought one off, uh, off eBay <laughs> and here it is here all the way from Russia. So thanks. Uh, to the person who supplied that. I don't have his name handy here. I don't know if it works, of course, um, but it was pretty cheap in comparison to buying the original with the gold pins. So this doesn't have gold pins, uh, and I think it's labelled, looks like it's labelled differently, but being assured that this is actually a replica, complete 100% clone of the chip that we're missing. So there you go, guys. Have a look on eBay if you get stuck for one of these chips. Pick one of these up, pretty cheap. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put that back into the uh, original uh, Super Sprint board. The, the problem here, though, at the moment, well, it's not a problem, but uh, at the moment I've got all my Championship Sprint ROMs in here, and I've got the Championship Sprint Slapstick security chip here. So this is actually operating like a uh, championship sprint, but that's fine. Look, we'll, we'll take this, pro this process is the, the one that's wrong. <laughs> it's absolutely the wrong processor in here. So we're going to get that out. We'll put it in our, our Russian clone chip. And then what we'll do, I still don't know about the rest of this board and if it's good. I mean, I know the ROMs are good, um, but I'm not sure about the rest of it. So it still may not work. And so that might not be the test for the main CPU itself. Um, the only way I could really test that on its own is to swap it into the other board which is currently working in the Super Sprint. But anyway guys, we will do that. We will swap this, um, the Russian chip in here and I'll swap this board back in and see if it works. Now if it does work, then I'll have to take both boards out and then swap the ROMs over because again, this is the original Super Sprint one. It's got the Super Sprint sticker on here and stuff. I might as well keep it original. Um, with the other board rather than mix this up with the championship sprint. So that's the plan there. Now, second thing is the monitor. If you go back to that last episode, you'll remember that I had grief with the monitor not showing any red. And in the end, I, even though I tried my best at trying to resolve that situation, I had to take it to Joe Mac and uh, to Joey, and he 
sorted out and um, gave it back to me. And in fact, when he gave it back to me, he said, I don't even know how that thing could have even operated. <laughs> it was that bad. Um, so he was quite surprised it even got a picture. So anyway, I got it home and uh, and I didn't film this stuff because, you know, we filmed taking it out and that. So I put, I put it all back in and, it, and, and fired it up and there was still no red. <laughs> and I'm like no 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 please don't let it be something on the you know on the the video board or something you know because i checked if you recall i checked all the cabling and everything to the um you know for continuity and i checked all that guys and now that the whole chassis has been done over and joey did all his checks it was clearly working with him but it still hadn't fixed the problem so guys i really you know, those sorts of things, you go back and you check off all the things that you do, you know, good old problem management, your checklist of what did I do, what did I check, what could it possibly be? Um, and I was really scratching my head, eh, because I thought, well, really, it's probably coming back to the to something on the board. But I thought, well, here's a way to check, right? You know, getting no red coming out I'd already turned up the monitor the red gun on the monitor like really high and so it would give a slight wash of red so I knew the gun was working still doesn't necessarily mean maybe that the gun is working brilliantly but it sort of gave the same result as a normal gun would I turned that back down so it sort of seemed like the red was there so I did the trick of um, swapping the red and the green um, <clears throat> cables over because it was already cut there uh, on those um, uh, the, the red, blue, green signals because that, that plug had already been changed over before. So it was really easy to just take that, you know, the existing cut, cut them off, swap them over. And of course, the expectation would be is that now I would see red where the green should be and I should see no green, uh, you know, just to sort of work out the, the issue. Um, and that's exactly what happened, right? So I thought, okay, well, I'm getting red, I'm getting full red now, but now I'm getting no green. So it comes back to, well, what's the, the common <laughs> part? It's really the socket um, and where the, you know, the connector is connecting on, the first pin there is red. And I thought, well, it can't be the socket per se because that's all been, you know, checked and you know, sort of re relatively fixed by, by Joey. And I thought, and it can't be the cable because I've already checked continuity to every single pin. <laughs> I was really stumped, guys. I thought, well, that's the problem. That's that pin somehow. And then I thought, well, okay, contact to the pin. Is that the problem? Because the cable stretches around the back and it sort of stretches over quite, you know, relatively firmly, not really tight, but firmly. So it puts it on a bit of a bend. So I put the multimeter uh, on, the, on the cable. Um, and actually, what did I do? Um, yeah, I put the I put the multimeter onto the um, into the cable onto the plug, and then I sort of bent the ca the the wires back in the direction like how it would be in the back of the cabinet, and I noticed that it lost connectivity, <laughs> and that's because when the cable goes into the back of the plug, it's on like a little metal shard, and that little metal shard as it gets pulled slightly moves within the plastic, and it's just enough to take it away from the connector, and it was made worse because that metal inside that one hole was pushed sort of right in, and it needed to be pushed out, and it can actually be pushed out from the outside, a little bit hard to explain, to look at the plug to see that, but um, that, that was it guys. I just pushed that metal pin inside that plug out a bit more within the hole, made the connection. I know, long story again guys, but that solved the problem. But I, I really wanted to share that with you because, you know, that, that's the sort of troubleshooting sort of techniques you, you need to stop and think about, you know, when you've got a gun missing or a colour missing, trying to work out is it the board, is it the connectors, is it the cable, is it the chassis, is it the tube, you know, you have to sort of just knock each one off and work out what it possibly, you know, could be out of those. But anyway, so we have a completely 100% working monitor, it looks sweet, uh, no burning on the tube anyway, uh, as well on the Super Sprint, so that's just awesome. So. We've got all that sorted, so I can button up the back of this actually. We don't need to do anything more from a monitor point of view. All right, so let's get on with it anyway, and um, let's get this Russian chip into this board set. Let's plug it into here and see if we get uh, it come up. And of course, as I said, it's going to come up with championship sprint. Let's hope so. Let's do that now. 
and unfortunately guys it is not working so yeah now I had a, a bit of an issue actually getting that chip in first of all it didn't want to go in and I thought what's going on here I pulled it out and noticed that the, one of the legs had bent in and up which wasn't good straighten that out and then I thought well what's going on here I had a look in the socket guys and there was still some pins left over from the broken um, CPU before which is why that other CPU the wrong one that was in there was sort of half sticking out because it couldn't be pushed in so make sure you watch out for that guys that uh, sort of bent the pin now I don't think it damaged the chip I was able to straighten it out and I got those other little pins out of the socket just using a needle but I'm really not sure now how good that socket is um, so I mean it could be the chip you know the chip may not be working the uh, the clone but again I can't really jump to conclusions as there was certainly problems with that socket with those pin legs stuck in there and then obviously once I flick them out I may have you know just damaged the socket so so I think what we're going to do guys because I really want to get this sort of the position against the wall um, and then start working on the other things on here in terms of the control control panel and the foot pedals and basically I, I think I'll use the championship um, sprint CPU board in the meantime and uh, take that other one away and I think I'll get a new socket put on there um, maybe have to do some other tests as well to see maybe I need to get a spare board set not sure yet but I think let's just go ahead get the championship sprint one back in here so this game is at least working all right guys well that's the plan I'll get the other board back in get this running push it up against the wall and then uh, we'll get on to the next step okay guys I actually got brave or stupid <laughs> and actually swapped that Russian chip into the known working championship sprint board just to see if it is actually the chip that's causing it the new chip and this is what I got now funnily enough when I first turned it on I actually got the starting sounds it actually did the sounds for the test because it's in test mode at the moment and as I and when I ran around to the front of the screen it had already then corrupted but it was like it sort of started um, which is odd but since then turning it on and off I'm not getting not getting anything other than the rubbish here now of course the next big test if I think I should do it or not is to put the real the good known processor into the sprint board but of course yeah that socket still worried about it. it could still be dodgy it could end up breaking my gold pins and then I'll be without a processor at all ah, I've come this far <laughs> I think I'll uh, try putting the processor in really carefully and see if uh, that will get the original sprint board up at least then you know I'm just trying to work out what the problem is I mean clearly it looks like that chip actually is no good unfortunately the copy um, is it a bad copy is it a bad chip I don't know looks like I'm gonna have to try and source an original Atari one now which is a shame because they're a lot more expensive all right so let me get this board out and um, let me uh, ease put the the gold chip in show you which one that is so this is the uh, the good gold one oh, I've got to be so careful these legs are so brittle I don't know even this one here has come off to the side of it no that's way too brittle guys now nah, I'm putting that back straight back in that end end leg there almost just actually came off that's how brittle these gold chips are mmm I'm going to put this one back in. <laughs> All right, back in a minute. Well, guys, I have actually put it back in its place. And as Murphy's Law would have it, <laughs> I've got a problem. Now, everything looks sweet here till you get to the track screens. And what happens is it seems like this is a certain, like, color palettes for the play field randomly start changing. And so the screen will sort of start uh, looking like it's in autumn colors and snow scenes and <laughs> stuff like that I didn't actually show it for that particular track um, but I'll show you in a minute it only seems to happen periodically and interestingly it doesn't seem to impact the main screen so it um, 
may be related to the video RAM area. Now, of course, I haven't made any other changes other than obviously taking the CPU out and putting it back in the board, and it was working perfectly before, and I can't see how that just taking the CPU out and putting it back in would have caused it. Interestingly, it has just stayed quite stable at the moment. Okay, so you can see here on the sides, we've got all this blue. We shouldn't have blue up there. That should all be green. Here we have uh, the snow kicking in. <laughs> ah, that shouldn't look like that, right? And now look at this. So we've got complete banding here. This block here in black. I think that the shadows are correct. You can see it flicking there in between. So yeah, there's something definitely going on. Um, it's not affecting the cars. It's not affecting the title screen. So seems to be you know something to do with the color palette specific chips for the color palette for the track um now hmm well, hopefully a chip hasn't failed on me but um i must admit it's sort of a chip might be failing though if it's not getting five volts now i did check it before here we have the snowy snowy scene again <laughs> Uh, I did check it uh, a while back and it was at 5 right down at the video board but it doesn't hurt I guess to check it again and just reseat all the connectors and reseat the board I mean that's really the only thing that I've changed guys so so I'm going to take this thing back out again which is a, a bit of a nightmare <clears throat> it's really heavy and it's a big squeeze to get it in but anyway I'm going to take it back out and um, see if I can get this uh, problem fixed it is pretty cool though, it's like changing weather conditions now in the snow. If only the cars reacted differently, it could be a whole new game. <laughs> Alright guys, I'm going to pull this out and take a look. Right, well I reset the boards and plugged all the connectors back in. And um, yeah, it didn't seem to, to help, it was still having the, the issue. There's certainly 5 volts getting to right to the bottom of the board, so that's traversing all the way through the double set down to the bottom point so it's still only getting its five volts exactly the same reading i can remember from last time but on this test screen guys look at this how weird is this so the top i'm not sure why there's two sets of bands of colors here on this testing it's almost like this is because it seems to start at the same level and then i'm not sure what it's trying to show and i mean obviously i know that this lot's dropping off quicker but yeah, the red is all scrambled up on that line only. How bizarre is that? So there's, there's something definitely wrong, because that shouldn't be showing like that, of course. But um, what that relates to specifically, and is that causing the issue that I've got? Not sure. So I shall continue on and investigate further. So there you go guys, that's where I got up to with the Super Sprint. It's pretty cool having snowy weather. <laughs> but no, we've got to get that fixed up. And so what I'm going to do is, you know, I really think it's a chip on the video board somewhere um, that's doing that. Some bits getting stuck or something's going on there. And um, I could try and hunt around and find the chip responsible. In fact, I started looking at some schematics and I think... I was getting close to potentially where a couple of those chips that might be responsible, but you know, guys, there could be so many paths and and you know potential chips there, and I just I just don't have the bandwidth and time to go through and test that right now. So I think what we'll do is we will continue with the swap from the championship sprint. Seems we're not using the championship sprint in any way. We're currently using the CPU board from the uh, championship sprint. I know the video board board is good um, and of course that can be swapped over with the ROM swap for the Super Sprint anyway so I'm going to swap that in. The only thing that I have to do which um, is going to take me a little bit of extra time is that the the headers for the header for the main power and stuff into the uh, into the video board has been soldered on to the Super Sprint one so I'm going to have to desolder that I'm going to have to hook that up to another header which I think I've got um, so once I've done that then I'll be able to hook that onto the um, other video board and then we should have a working super sprint 
Then of course I have to fix the controls, but some good news there as well because I actually have received some from Canada. Um, I've received some replacement Atari pots uh, for the pedals, so I'm all set there. I think I've got enough of the Opti boards for the optical sensors on the steering wheels to replace the yellow one, which is not working. And of course I have to do the uh, the main control panel swap over and there's some, hmm, I've got to make some decisions there because there's certain aspects of the old one which aren't as good as the new one and vice versa. Uh, there's so much to do to get that one going but that is the plan to finish that off as long, you know, along with everything else um, with all the other boards that we've got. That's going to be another video guys can't do it tonight i'm absolutely shattered and uh i thought well at least here's a catch-up video you know i've got all the parts some fixes are coming um so some good episodes coming up so but if this is the first time you've watched please tag along subscribe and you'll be notified when the next video comes out and it's more than likely going to be about getting all these other machines all these boards that i got that i got fixed back into their rightful places i've also i guys i seriously i do have some other really cool things lined up soon um can't say too much about them as yet but some cool things lined up so please do subscribe thanks to everyone that has subscribed that already is subscribed make sure you fix your own games <laughs> don't just watch me fixing mine fix your own games and make sure you play them share them with your friends enjoy that nostalgia enjoy your arcade and of course make sure you look after yourself keep well and i must admit you know even through this week was pretty tough for me I think, you know, when, when times get bad, <laughs> don't worry, don't worry, things will always get better. And, uh, you know, put a smile on your face and get yourself through it, <laughs> you'll be fine. And, uh, and just enjoy all the good things that you have. Enjoy other people and the company that you have, because you never know when that company may be gone. Um, so live life to the fullest, enjoy yourself. Please subscribe. Till next time, ciao for now. You must continue! You can do it! You are amazing! The theater is now closed.